it's expressing an authority or a character of this individual that you're speaking of. So, for instance, here when it says, he shall be called Emmanuel. Now, if you go to Isaiah, I believe you go to like Isaiah chapter 8. And then you go to like chapter 10 or ch no, it could be 7 and 8. Is it chapter 7 where it talks about the virgin shall conceive and bear a son? Okay, chapter 7. But then you go into chapter 8. Now, as far as history says and theologians can find, whether people agree or not, I'm just putting out there what you're going to find if you research it. Emmanuel is thought to be the son that was born to the prophet Isaiah. From a prophetess who was a maiden. And the prophetess bore him this son and his son was to be a sign because before... This son was born. I think Brother Judah did a lesson uh, talking about some of these things. I just wasn't near that particular day. But when this son was born, it says, it says, uh, butter and honey shall he eat. To know to refuse the, um, the, the, uh, the, the evil and the, uh, uh, to know the difference between good and evil. Because before he shall know the difference, this uh, land shall be um, bereaved of both her kings. But what land? He wasn't talking about the whole land of Israel. As far as I know, he was talking about um, he was talking about Syria and Damascus, which would have been the 12 tribes and their leader and the Syrians who they were trusting in to help them fight against Assyria. King Hezekiah was the one who was the king over Judah in them days, and Judah was not allowed to be destroyed. So it was not talking about the king of Judah being taken out with the king of Samaria. The king of Samaria and a confederate king who they trusted in which was Romalia and uh, another, they were actually taken out together by the Assyrians. So this child was born to this virgin as a sign, and his name would be Emmanuel, and Emmanuel means God is with us. But look at it. When, when Isaiah was sent to Ahaz, it said Isaiah went with his son, Shirjak, Shirjasha. Now, so Isaiah had a few different children. When he went to Ahaz, he had a son with him, and his son name was Sheer Jashub. Do you know what Sheer Jashub mean? Yeah. A remnant shall return. So when he named his children, he named them according to events of what God showed him. And they actually stood for signs in Israel. Mm -hmm. So his son who went with him was a witness that, yeah, God going to get rid of Samaria, but a remnant, <laughs> a remnant shall return. Then he was told he was going to have this son as a sign. But when he had the son, when you go to the next chapter, as far as I know, they're supposed to be the same child. He named the child when he was born. The child was not named Emmanuel. The child was called Maharhel Hashbaz. Maha, Maharhel Hashbaz. I, I believe I'm saying that correctly. Yeah, even, yeah, yeah, what Judah was trying to say. <laughs> What'd you say, bro? Y'all heard what Nashawn said. That was his name. So what I'm saying is, if this is the same child spoken of in Isaiah 7 and in Isaiah 8, even when that child was supposed to be called Emmanuel, when he was born, just like Yeshua, his name was literally called something different on the everyday. People say, hey, what's up, Maharla Hashbaz? Just like everyday people saw, hello, Yeshua, son of Mary, son of Joseph. But he was still Emmanuel, just like Maharlel Hashbaz was still Emmanuel. Because name mean authority and character. So if, you, if Yeshua means by the title, if Yeshua means God saves us or God has saved, do he fit both of those characters? When he came on the scene, was not God with the people? God was with the people. That's what John chapter 1 tells us, right? Yeah. John chapter 1 tells us that when Yeshua was revealed, God was with us. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Right? So that's who he was. Even if he wasn't called that on a daily basis, his name shall be called. His reputation is going to be this. Every time we read name, we're thinking of a title like Zadok. But, brothers and sisters, 
I'm also Joseph. Because that's what my mama named me. Because of some attribute she found in the Bible and named me after this Bible character. But in my own heart, as I grew, I wanted to be just. And I found that Zadok meant just or righteous. So even though I was born with Joseph, everybody, everybody in this building still call me Zadok. Even though I'm Joseph. Because of a certain character that I'm, tr that I'm trying to live up to. Or that I aspire to be. So hopefully when you say Zadok, I'm living up to that title, even though that's not my birth name. So Christ was Emmanuel, even though he was called Yeshua on an everyday basis. See, when they see it's written, it says, it was fulfilled this. It's just like Christ said to the children of Israel. He said, well, have Isaiah spoken of you? These people have ears and don't hear. They have eyes and don't see. When Isaiah was talking, Isaiah was actually talking to the people of his day. They fulfilled what Isaiah was saying, right? But when Christ looked at the crowd of people in his time, he said, man, y'all fulfilling what Isaiah says. Isaiah was talking about y'all. What is Christ saying? Is he saying it was a future prophecy? Or is he saying the generation fit the same thing that Isaiah was talking about? So Christ fit the exact same thing that that young man born in the days of Isaiah fit it. And that's why his name shall be called Emmanuel. And every time we call him our Messiah, you know what we're saying? He died and was resurrected and ascended to the Father and sit on the right hand of glory. And what? God was with us. Ain't that what we're saying? Whoever accept Yeshua as their Messiah, aren't you saying that God, was, that God is with us? And if you do things, if you do things according to the name of Yeshua in your life right now, aren't you saying God is with us? Not just was, but is. Ain't that what we saying? So if that's what we saying, then how is he not Emmanuel if that's what Emmanuel is? Right. It's all about understanding, brothers and sisters. Now that I've said that, whether you agree with it or not, you know, it's not my call. I'm just explaining what I see here, because as we get into his name, we're going to understand more the premise of coming to the Father in his name. Let us go now to Matthew chapter 7. Go right over to chapter 7, and we're going to read verses 21 through 23. So, he was born, she named him Jesus, but his name was also called God is with us. His reputation and his character, that's what people said about him. Even the Pharisees came to him and said, teacher... We know that thou art, what? Come from God. Because <laughs> no man could do the things you do without God being with him. That's what they said to him when they tried to come to him and ask him some questions. Ain't that, ain't that what they said to him? They was calling him Emmanuel when they said, teacher, we know you sent from God. Because no man could do what you do unless God is with him. Unless he's Emmanuel. Go ahead, um, chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name have done many wonderful works? Uh -huh. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, Yeshua is telling us, and this scripture is famous, many going to come unto me in that day and that time, and they're going to say, Lord, didn't we do all these things in your name? We prophesied in your name. We cast out devils in your name. And we did many wonderful works in your name. And he's going to say, in a sense, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're referring to. Get out, get out of my sight. Did they do it in his name or not? Were they lying? Not in the power and authority. Well, okay. So, in their mind, they said, when they went and touched somebody and they prayed over somebody, you know what they did? They said, in the name of Jesus. Or they said, Yeshua HaMashiach or Yahweh Shai, however you like to go with it. Okay? They said that. In the name. 
When they prophesied great things, they said, we're bringing this to you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. They, I believe they said that because they told him when they did it, they did it in his name, didn't they? But he going to say, I don't know who you are. Why would he say something like that? Go over to the book of Mark. Go over to the book of Mark, chapter 16. And when we get there, we're going to start reading at verse 14 to 20. Verses 14 through 20. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Uh huh. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believed and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believed not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Okay. Now, Yeshua told his disciples these signs was going to follow them. So what about people who didn't see Yeshua in the flesh, but they followed after his apostles or they did things according to the pattern that they saw them do it. And they said, when we was doing this stuff, we did it all in your name. What about that? Because what if some people did stuff and it actually come to pass? See, everything ain't about they was faking trying to prophesy or faking trying to do some wonderful works. Some wonderful things didn't happen. And people done brought up the name of Yeshua. And Corinthians, it tells us that it's people who can literally give their body to be burned and still not have charity. They could actually bestow their goods to feed the poor and not have charity. So it's a danger. Like, for instance, we're sitting here and we're, and we're seeing more of this uh, socialist aspect of the gospel. Which is really, in essence, the true, uh, how do you say, the true Nazarene way. The true Christian way, but because it's not taught, people don't wouldn't even consider it Christian what we're talking about. They gonna label it what they understand. Oh, that's socialism. Okay, well it's socialism then. And you got people who coming together. Ananias and Sapphira sold everything that they had to feed the poor, didn't they? They didn't say that they didn't. They actually got they liquidated their assets to join the movement. They just privately try to keep back a little bit of it so did them selling everything to die profit them they died didn't they what did it profit them nothing so it's not just about people doing something and they faking like oh no you 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 tried to pray over somebody but ain't nothing happened no you could pray over somebody and something happened but you don't endure till the end judas cast judas all these signs followed the disciples before they did, but before Yeshua um, gave his life in that manner, when he laid down his physical flesh. Judas cast out devils too. We don't read where it say the 12 came to him and said, Master, even the demons um, obey us, except Judas. <laughs> That's not written. You'll never find that except Judas. But all that that Judas did did not profit him. Why? Because he betrayed the Messiah. Ananias and Sapphira fell to that same spirit in the end of things. So we have to be careful because, yeah, we all sitting up right now having a Sabbath convocation. You might get through the next feast season. You might be right in the field working next to each other and you picking apples and you raising animals and you doing business together and people joining. It's all gravy. But you have to do that until the very end. You can't do all that and then betray the Most High. We can't be like um, Manasseh. He did all of this uh, 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 good and then turned evil. You can't do that because the Lord going to kill you off. So all that good you did and everything... You basically can kill it by eventually 
getting away from them principles that you started to walk in originally. That's why baptism is so important. Like, Brother Don is, 